Do you consider yourself a thrill seeker? Do you like to live life on the edge? In fact, do you not really value your life at all? Because we're looking for you. Come join us. We've got a brand new product available here at T. Martin Airlines, where a severely underqualified pilot attempts some of the most dangerous landings in the world. What's up guys and welcome back to some more Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm really excited about this one. We are gonna be attempting the epic landing challenges in this game. So there are eight beauties here for us to be able to take on and hopefully eventually we can say we've landed at each one. Obviously we love our scenic flights and, and destination locations and stuff like that, but I would like to actually try to get better, try to learn a little bit and try to, you know, enhance the flying experience here. So you guys may recognize one of them, Saba, we already did. It was like our second episode of this game. So obviously we'll skip that one, but my plan is to go through and try to land at each of these. It's gonna be really interesting. Now it looks like our, uh, our first one here is Aspen. Good old Aspen, I love it out in Colorado. Uh, so Aspen Pitkin County Airport, also known as Sardi Field, is a high altitude regional airport nestled in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. To land on runway 33, pilots must contend with a steep approach through the area's mountainous terrain and a strong chance of bad weather obscuring the path. So, uh, I mean, this, this is a brand new product, a brand new service we're offering here at T. Martin Airlines. See beautiful places around the world, scream on the edge of your seat, hoping for your life. It's gonna be a good time. All right, so we are we are coming in here, dude. This is absolutely beautiful. Look out those windows. Those are the Rocky Mountains. You know, imagine you and your buddies, you and your family splashed out on a, uh, a PJ. You're, you're coming in for a week of skiing or something like that. I guess it kind of looks like there's not much snow in the mountains for skiing, but still pretend. You look up at the cockpit and it's your boy up there. Woo! That would that would not that would not be a good thing. So here we go. I mean, we're we're definitely we're definitely gonna want to power this this girl down a little bit. I'm gonna put our our flaps down. Is that the runway right there? Let me let me bring up our map real quick. Check this VFR map. Yes, that's our runway. All right. So we we've got to lose altitude and we've we've got to we've got to make this happen here. Maybe not lose too much altitude though. I'm tempted to try to land it inside, but I also, I mean, it's its kind of nice to be able to see outside the jet, isn't it? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. It, the inside is definitely more challenging, and it's obviously a lot more realistic and stuff, but outside of it, at least we can kind of kind of see what's going on. All right, so we need, we need everything slowed down here. Maybe not all the way. Let me see how we're doing here. We want to try to land on that, that blue dot. Want to try to land on that blue dot up there. Pull back, Tro. Land on that blue dot. Stall. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, we're good. Uh, just a little bump, it, a little turbulence in the air. You know, a thunderstorm just came through. It, uh, it, it's, uh, that's normal. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry about the suspension or anything. You know, that, that's, that's, that was supposed to happen. So our landing precision was pretty good for our first try. Ground roll, is that like how much we're going left and right, I'm assuming, based on these arrows? That wasn't great. Landing smoothness was a 69. That wasn't great either. You know, it wasn't perfect, but I feel like that wasn't the worst first attempt ever. We may have broken a couple of vertebrae in our lower back with that landing. It was a bit of a jolt. Our first touch back to earth, but that's fine. We all made it in one piece. We all landed, the bird got down safely, we didn't explode into a ball of flames. So that's that's improvement over what we've had before. And that's actually kind of what I'm, I'm excited about for, for attempting some of these. Like it's gonna be cool to see some really interesting places and some of the more unique runways in the world. But I'm also really excited to, uh, to just kind of try to get a little bit better. I feel like that's gonna assist all of our other trips and things that we take. So we're gonna keep an eye on our airspeed here. I wanted us at about 140 knots on our first turn, which we're gonna start to do right now. And that should help us bleed off some uh, some airspeed. Once it's about 130 on the approach, and I would like to try to, I don't know, just have a little bit more room as we approach. I think we need to, to really accentuate the S. You know, come, come back almost backwards a little bit here, as we're doing right now, and then we're gonna loop it back around and we're gonna have a long straight run up to make sure we're lined up make sure we could adjust our our 
airspeed and altitude and everything else. I'm going to give it just a little bit more power here. We're getting a little low on airspeed, but that's all right. We're going to bring it around this way. Probably going to need a decent bit more power as we're turning. Go ahead and bring old girl on around here. Get a nice view of that runway. All right. Probably want to back off power because we do have more altitude to lose. We're coming in way, way, way better here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hit the flaps just real quick, just for a little bit. Let me try to keep an eye on our, our speed. Oh, we're coming in way too hot. Flaps are all the way down again. We're coming in perfectly online at about 130 knots. Flaps up, flaps back down. So now we just gotta set this bird right on that mark. We gotta lose altitude and lose speed here though. Come on, where's the mark at? Shoot, we're gonna, we're gonna. I mean, you know, it skipped a little bit, but that's how you normally land, is it not? <laughs> uh, we just, we came in a little bit too hot. Just a little bit too much speed, but we did dramatically increase our, uh, our score. Precision was not there, but ground roll was good and smoothness was really good. That's awesome. We're going to go in for a third attempt here and we're going to see if we can take everything that we've done and, uh, and put it to use. And to also, of course, I've got some fun facts about Aspen for you guys. So um, Aspen is uh, its beautiful, beautiful city. I've been there once, had a fantastic time. It's actually a really, really small town. So it was originally uh, discovered by the U Indians back in the day, the UTE Indians. They actually called it the Shining Mountains because the mountains all around Aspen were originally filled with silver. It was a, a heavy, heavy, place for, for silver mining back in the 1800s when we had like the big silver boom. That's when, when you know, tons of people started populating it and stuff. And uh, I think it was the first town in Colorado to actually have electricity for everyone because there were so many people coming here to be able to mine these mountains, which is kind of interesting. But uh, then, you know, over time, it kind of developed itself into this, this very exclusive, very expensive ski and, and like outdoorsy type town for the rich and famous. I mean, it's it's extremely expensive. It's only got a population of about 7,500 people. And uh, the median price of a house or a condo here is over $5 million. That's how expensive it is to live here. In 2015, the cheapest house up for sale, and I say house because it was a trailer, was like $560,000. So it's very expensive to live here. It's very expensive to visit. The hotels are expensive. The, the rentals are crazy too. It's got beautiful mountains and some of the best skiing and snowboarding and stuff in the US. It's the home of the uh, the, the Winter X Games a lot of times, Aspen, Aspen Snowmass. That's actually why I went to Aspen one time a, a long, long time ago. Let me see if we can land this thing. Come on, baby. Coming in a little hot, I would imagine but we might be able to put it on the button. Hold on. I mean, we were really close there and I feel like that wasn't, that wasn't our smoothest landing, but that wasn't that hard. Hold on a second. 899,904, really good precision. Ground roll, we did have a little bit of side to side and the smoothness wasn't bad. I think it could have been better but the fact that we just had our best landing while I was talking to you guys is, is I'm kind of I'm kind of happy about. Up into the top 2400, we'll take that. Bugalaga is coming up next. But yeah, so way way back in the day, like I'm talking nearly 10 years ago, I was invited by this this like YouTube network called Network A, and they were heavy in like the extreme sports side of things, and they they invited a few gamers out to Aspen for the X Games. It was insane. I had like dinner with Sean White. I got to know Sage Kotzenberg pretty well, which if you guys don't know him, he's a really, really good uh, US Olympic uh, winning snowboarder. He's got like, I don't even know how many gold medals, but uh, it was just this crazy thing. And I was like fresh out of high school, had no clue what was going on and just like living the life in Aspen. It happened one time and I, ne I never went back. So I'd love to go back someday, but like I said, it's it's really expensive. Homes are, are you know, 25 million plus up into the 50 millions. It's 
some of the most expensive real estate, some of the most expensive shopping, some of the most expensive everything in the US. So it's, uh, it's beautiful, but it's not quite as accessible. So, ooh, what is this? We're landing here in this? And the, the minivan plane, the minivan Cessna? We're landing on the side of a mountain on a dirt strip and I, did you guys see that we were doing like a, oh, this is, this is gonna be lovely, okay. Is this thing down here on the tip of our nose? Is that, is that the airport that it wants us to land at? That's, that's an airport, excuse me. <laughs> you want me to do a 270 degree turn and land at this airport? Yep, I can see, I can see the dot. I can see the landing spot on the side of a mountain here. Looks like there's extreme elevation even on the runway. It looks like it. Oh. Dude, this this is this is gonna be a disaster. All right, so how fast are we going? We're going way too fast. The good news is we are in a Cessna, so it's it's not like it's not like we're gonna be able to be able to you know speed up too much. So I'm thinking as long as we take a very wide berth here and give us plenty of time to try to try to line ourselves up that's going to be our, our best case scenario let's make sure we take this thing nice and wide it's also going to be tough to get the elevation right because i mean we're landing on the side of a mountain you know what i mean <laughs> this is going to be great i'm excited for this one it's going to be a bumpy ride ladies and gentlemen just be sure to, to buckle up them seat belts um you know if there's any children in the, the plane i uh, wish them the best of luck this is this is not going to be good for them. It's going to be it's going to be an awfully bumpy ride. So we're going to start coming around here. I would imagine we probably want to start bringing down the airspeed a bit. Let me see. Can I see the actual strip? Yep, it's there. Okay, we're looking all right. I do feel like we're still coming in a little bit hot though. I'm gonna I'm gonna really bring it back. Bring our mix down a little bit, and then maybe even think about bringing the flaps down. Shoot, we probably need to go a little bit wider, though. Let's watch this airspeed. Okay, so we're going a little bit too slow now. We're going to put the flaps back up. I would imagine we want to be about at this speed when we're trying to come into land, but we've got way too much altitude, and we're coming in a little bit crooked. we got time to fix it, though. That's why we took a wide berth. Flaps down. Pretty much nothing on the engine here. Oh, dude, we're still too high. This thing is way lower than I thought it was going to be. Flaps all the way down. Come on. Slow it down, Trev. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. We're coming in too high. Hold on! That's, that's, I mean. Does that count? Is the hill there to help you slow down? Because I actually don't, you did not land on the designated runway. <laughs> okay. This time around, we've definitely got to, got to lose a lot more altitude before we come in. And, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> this airport is just ridiculous. There's nothing around anywhere. And we just have this airstrip on the side of a mountain. I love it. So, uh, Boogalaga here. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm probably not, but that's okay. Um, try my best. It's, uh, it's actually a, a, I think it's a city. It's the name of the airport, but I think it's also like a small city in, uh, pa Papau, Papua. Uh, it's the easternmost and largest province in Indonesia. And, uh, it's like the western side of New Guinea. So, like, there's Papua New Guinea on the right side and then Papau over here on the left side. It's, uh, you know, obviously very remote. Lots of indigenous people live here. Uh, I think population two to three million or something like that. So there's a lot of people that live out here and uh, apparently some very interesting wildlife and vegetation and stuff. Obviously we have rainforests down here below us, but they've got tree kangaroos, which I didn't know a tree kangaroo was a thing, but it is and they're awfully cute. So now, now I eventually one day would love to meet one of those little guys. They've got like whale sharks off the coast, really good diving and stuff like that. Uh, man, I, I just, I, I feel like this is just so far beyond 
any any scope of the world that most of us will ever see you know what i mean like look look at all these just untouched mountains and trees and it's it is incredibly beautiful that's for sure so we're going to bring this this bad girl on around here we're going to take a nice wide berth and we're going to see if we can bring it in a little bit lower and a little bit slower this time we're definitely a, a bit too high up so i'm going to focus on on basically we're going to give this mountain here a haircut and we want to come in, come in about like 78 knots when we come in to land and we just we've got to make sure that we're low enough i think that was our, our biggest thing last time is we definitely were not low enough so here we go we're going to slow this thing down i'm going to go ahead and put our flaps all the way down we're coming in extra hot but that's all right because we had to lose so much altitude here we go flaps all the way down engine is all the way down we're losing a lot of airspeed quickly but we're gonna see if we can set this bird oh we're losing maybe a little bit too much airspeed maybe a little bit too much yeah here we go maybe a little bit too much dude this is so sketchy because I, I i feel like it's oh gosh i feel like it's kind of deceiving how low the runway is you like these trees right before it you need to basically just barely get over those to be able to make it onto the runway stalling is a good thing here I mean the landing gear probably went through the cabin and impaled a bunch of people but we landed. I mean, I was I was talking quite a bit in that last one. It's a little bit harder to focus. It's it's clear we really we need to make sure we're we're level with the runway as we're coming in. So I'm gonna try to go a little bit slower this time around. It actually looks like our speed's pretty good. We've got our flaps all the way down. We're coming in. Ooh, this this is actually looking fairly spicy here. I don't want to lose too much speed too quickly. I'm gonna go flaps up and a little bit. Just just a little bit here. Flaps back down. Here we go. This this might actually be pretty good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go outside. Stop. Pull up. A little bit of a stall. Smooth landing though. I mean we overshot we overshot our target a little bit, but we didn't go rolling halfway up the hill, and I actually feel like that was pretty solid. That's gonna put us in the top five thousand. I think precision is what killed us the most there. Smoothness was above half, but not great. Roll was pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good though. In the kingdom of Bhutan, in a deep valley on the bank of the river Paro Chu, amidst the towering Himalaya mountains, stands Paro International Airport, with surrounding peaks as high as 18,000 feet and a runway carved out of mountain foliage situated a mile and a half above sea level. This is widely considered one of the most challenging airports in the world. And we're gonna be flying the, the big body, the A320neo. <laughs> 150 knots coming in, right bank turn, 140 knots to land. This is gonna be a disaster. Bhutan is a Buddhist kingdom on the Himalayas eastern edge. It's known for its monasteries, fortresses, and dramatic landscapes that range from subtropical plains to steep mountains and valleys. Paro is known as the most dangerous airport to land on in the entire world. And guess what? There are only eight trained pilots that are allowed to do this. And I'm gonna be the ninth. Here we go. Let's let's hop into it. It can't be that hard. It can't be that hard at all. So it wanted us at about 140 knots, which is currently where we're at. We're gonna wanna drop that to 130 as we land. Where is the where's the, the runway? Where's where's our So it's gonna be around here to the right. We've got rainbows off in the distance. That stands for success. I'm gonna go find the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow, and uh, we're we're gonna land, we're gonna <laughs> land this big body in Bhutan. Let's get it, baby. Bhutan's actually the only country in the world. Technically, it's a kingdom, but it's like the only area in the world that is overall carbon negative in terms of like their their footprint on the world, which is pretty cool. Uh, carbon footprint is obviously a very important thing. Got to take care of this beautiful planet that we all live on and uh you know flying jets probably isn't helping but that's all right look at this guy down here dude that thing is that one of the monasteries 
over on the hill. Yeah, that's that's pretty sick. All right. So I'm, I'm going to come in from outside here. I'm a little bit nervous at, at all this talk about how difficult this landing is. Let me let me take a look. The airport's right over here. So we're going to be... Are we going to be coming over the crest of this... Mush we probably should have been over here. We're going to be coming over the crest of this mountain. And we, we are immediately going to have to set this thing down. Our flaps are already all the way down. So we're not going to have to worry about that. Oh yeah, we should have went a little bit more left. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have way too much altitude and way too much speed. Oh, I, I was not. I was not prepared. It's it's all the way down there. We're just going to bring it in. We're going to bring it in hot, fellas. Here we go. Don't worry. I'm I'm qualified. I got this. Three hundred. I got this. Don't don't you don't you worry your little little sassy pants at all. Five hundred. We're not coming in too hot. This seems this seems like a perfectly normal speed. 100 and, 180 knots. Just set her down. Just set her. We're, we're running out of runway. Oh, we got a double rainbow! Everybody, look out your left window. We got a double rainbow. Don't don't look at the ground. The ground's coming awfully fast, isn't it? Uh, we're out of runway. We're out of runway, Captain. Uh, okay, yeah. We're this this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those one of those go around go around scenarios. So other fun facts about Bhutan, they are obviously a very, uh, you know, environmentally conscious people. It's illegal to kill anything, animals, cows, birds, stuff like that. Uh, you're not allowed to kill anything. No plastic bags. They actually have a ban on plastic bags. They, uh, they actually have a tradition where if you're trying to have children and you're trying to get pregnant, uh, people from the community come and draw phalluses on the side of your house as a sign of fertility. <laughs> And good luck. So that is is something I can definitely get behind. And uh, I, I just think back to like the high school days and stuff. Like all my textbooks that that you know had those drawn all over them. Those people would be would be very friendly and appreciated in the kingdom of Bhutan. So it's it's got the Himalayas to the north side of it, and uh, it actually has the highest unclimbed peak in the world within its borders, which is pretty interesting. Now we've kind of taken a bit of an interest in, in mountains in this series, so that's pretty cool. Kind of seems like our angle of attack is a bit aggressive again here. I think we're going to want to lose altitude a lot quicker next time around. But with this really long runway, we might be able to we might be able to do something here. One hundred. Come on, slow slow down, big girl. You're way too fast. We're coming in way 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 too hot. At least this time we might be able to touch the runway a bit. Just to kind of get a feel for it. Ooh, see that? That wasn't bad. We're not on target. Are we going to be able to stop, 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 stop? Put this thing in reverse. Come on. Back it up. Back it up. Oh my gosh. That's why the runway's so long. All right. So we definitely want to definitely want to slow down the approach and get a little bit lower. We're, we're getting close. I, I've got a feeling this, this third try could be the uh, the charm. We'll, we'll see what happens here. But uh, last couple of facts about Bhutan. They actually, the, the families run off a of matriarchy. So the women are the head of household. They're the ones that run the businesses. They inherit the real estate. Like when you get married, the man moves into the woman's house and she, she kind of, she's the boss. The boss ass BI, you know, up in charge. So uh, that's, that's kind of cool. The national sport of Bhutan is archery which is really interesting. I feel like that's a sport we don't really see a ton of. I mean, I feel it on, see it on ESB and the Ocho occasionally, but not, not too often. And um, they actually, the Bhutanese people still believe in the Yeti, which I, I say that like it's in a bad way, but I think that's pretty dope. He's kind of like a supernatural, spiritual type thing that they believe in. Obviously they live up here in the Himalayas. If I lived here, I'd, I'd probably believe in it too. I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably, you know, be a little bit scared of some crazy man-eating mountain being out there. So uh, we're gonna come around here. I feel like we're a little high. I feel like our speed is actually halfway decent. Obviously, we don't want to go too slow to fall out of the sky. We'd be better off being around 130 knots, but we should be at 130 by the time we get around this mountain. Oh, this is actually looking pretty good. Let me use our rudder a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut power to the engines. Okay. 
We've got more than enough speed here. Power is all the way off the engines. Let's just let this big bird float in here. Okay. I mean, probably could have been a little bit closer to the ground because we're gaining a lot of, of airspeed coming in like this. 100, 650, 40, 30, 20. Why did our engines power back up? What is happening? I had it all the way down and off. I think the autopilot just engaged the engines at the last minute and that was like the perfect approach. We had the perfect speed and we were about to, to land, maybe not on, but very close to that target. I, I can't explain it to you. It's it's probably the Yeti out there. Is there is there like a Yeti? We got a Yeti down here messing with our, our landing gear or something or like our electronics, you know what? Like the, the landing gear wouldn't have done that, but our electronics, is he like chewing on something? That was odd. We're gonna come around here. I'm gonna cut all power to the engines. Maybe not all. Give it just a little bit. Shoot. Why does it do this, dude? Turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off. We were good. We were good. It's the, and now look at this. Now we're up to 150. Why does it keep doing that? Cut it, cut it plane, cut it. Autopilot, cut it. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good, cut it. Turn it off. Dude, it's it's powering us. I can't I can't cut it. I'm gonna try maybe pulling a little bit more to the left through here. I do feel like we're kind of cutting it fairly close to that mountain. So if I I think kind of like we did in in um, Aspen, if we cut left and then go back right a little bit more, that might put us more online to be able to do this. And maybe that way, the autopilot is is gonna work a little bit better with us and won't won't come online when we don't want it to. So we got to bring this thing on around. Just give us a slightly longer lineup with the runway here. We're at about 130 knots, which is really where we want to be, but we have to be careful. Oh, shoot, our engines are spooling up again. I don't know how to turn that off. Come on. We don't want that. Now we are fully lined up here. We don't want those engines to come back online. We're good. We're good, engines. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Autopilot, I know where I'm going. I'm taking a detour. Don't you dare try to mess with me here. So somehow we're supposed to lose a ton of altitude from the edge of that mountain to here, but yet not gain too much airspeed. No, 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 we were good. We were at 130 miles an hour, no. We were at 130 knots. Why is this kicking on? We were good! There's some sort of a fail, I, I mean, I don't have autopilot on. I'm, can we, is there a way for us to like get inside and turn off like the safety measures or something? It's probably not something you wanna hear your pilot say, but seriously, like we're, I feel like we're coming in and, and doing exactly what we need to do. We're getting down to the speed we wanna be at. And as soon as we get like one knot below 130, it's like, nope, got a blast. I mean, they didn't say they were gonna be easy landings, so. It makes sense that we're a little bit frustrated, but my goodness, dude, I just that that one I felt like I was robbed. That one I felt like we were we were looking good. We have really lined this one up nicely. We were way over on the left hand side of this valley. So we want to come in, but do you I mean you have to skirt this mountain, and I feel like anytime we go to skirt this mountain, that fail safe is like, nope, you're too low. Throttle it out, power it out. We're good, man. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh, this is this is this is freaking perfect. Engines all the way down. Maybe not all the way down. Maybe leave it a little bit so it doesn't take over. All right, engines all the way down. Come on. Come on. A little bit to the side of the runway, but that's fine. Come on. Oh, oh, I mean, we, we were a little bit past the marker, but come on, come on, please stop in time. Woo! Round of applause for the pilot. I know it doesn't, it doesn't, dude, it, it does not look difficult, but it is extremely difficult. There are so many forces and things pushing and, and pulling away from you. 473,000 points right there. If we could have landed a little bit earlier, we definitely, definitely would have had a little bit more to do there. But look at this. We made it all the way to the end of the runway, and now we can just kind of taxi off with this bad boy. Um, it's kind of a little, 
A little bit sketchy here, especially for this big of a plane, but we made it. Look at that parking job. So precision was pretty good. Ground wall was awful because we were off to the side. Our smoothness was our smoothest landing of the day. I mean, if we would have been more centered, I, I, I we're in the top 2,500 here, which is insane. This, this is obviously a very, very challenging one. If we would have been more in the center, I think we could have been, you know, top 1,000 or something like that. But dude, that was fun. That, that one in particular was very frustrating because it, it, it's like I wasn't in control of the aircraft. It kept powering up when we didn't want it to. So I don't know what that was about. We were probably doing something wrong. It's probably the, the aircraft telling us we were doing something wrong, but I mean, we got it done. So there you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I've got some fun trips planned for us coming up next. And then uh, maybe in a future episode, like a week or so, we can come back and check out some of the other difficult landings if you guys would be interested in that. Let me know where you guys want to fly next down in the comments. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.